Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, you're watching here on Patreon right now. Uh, I know I've spoke about this already on Israeli News Live, but I'm about to go deeper with you guys here on Patreon. Um, I, I'm blown away by what the Heavenly Father has shown me about the cornerstone becoming the headstone, Jacob's ladder, um, so much to this is just baffling to me to begin with. I mean, have you really thought about this? Have you really contemplated, those of you that watched that over on Israeli News Live, that when the scripture says the, the builders rejected the cornerstone, and the cornerstone, of course, becomes the headstone, Jesus asked him that question, you know, don't you know that? Well, it's right here before us, verse 42. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doings. It is marvelous in our eyes. And yet, when you think about that, who, who's he talking about? The builders. You see, when Jacob, when we, when we read over here in Genesis here, when Jacob goes and he's on his way to Laban's house, he's going to end up falling in love with Rachel and end up getting Leah and Rachel and, and, uh, and, and the two uh, handmaids that they had to be as wives. <clears throat> but on his way there, he stays a night, what is believed to be Jerusalem, modern-day Jerusalem, and it is believed to be right where the temple sits today is where he was sleeping at that night on that hillside. And he put a stone there and he uses it for a pillow. And of course, we know the story that how that he saw in a dream the angels of God ascending and descending upon that place. And when he, and of course, you know, God makes him the promise, you know, that he's going to have his seed is going to be like the sand of the sea. Uh, innumerable, uh, every, everything that we read about here in, in Genesis chapter 28. And he actually says, this is the gate of heaven. Um, <laughs> Sha'ah HaShemayim, right there. It's right there, just so you can see it. So hold that in mind. Jesus also says that he is the door, the way, the truth, and the light thereof, right? We know that. We know that David said in Psalm 118, when, when the very talk about the, the stone, when Jesus quotes, you know, did you not read in the scriptures where it says the stones that the master or that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? He also uses the word gates. Open to me the gates of righteousness. But to who li, but to who li, open for me, Sha'ari Tzadik, the gates of righteousness. And I will enter into them, and I will give thanks unto the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteousness shall enter into it, or the righteous shall enter into it. It was the only way to enter in, and Jesus is that door to the sheepfold, and there's no other way to get to the Father but by him, right? He says, I will give thanks unto you, for you have answered me and are become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And the reason why I keep bringing up Jacob is because the builders decided that we needed a physical temple. They decided that we had to build a temple. Now, God never instructed Jacob to build a temple. We don't find that. But yet he's in Jerusalem. He's at that spot. He lays a stone down for a pillow and he lays his head on that pillow. And that stone is the cornerstone. And in his head, he has that dream. He has the dream of the angels ascending and descending. Showing that through a spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ, you enter into the kingdom. Ye are the temple. See, the temple that was to be built was not a temple made with hands. Remember what the scripture says about that? Isaiah 66, I believe it is. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you, you may build unto me? 
Where is the place that may be my resting place? The human heart is the resting place. For all these things hath my hand made, and so all these things came to be, saith the Lord. But on this man I look, even him that is poor, of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You see, this is what had happened to Jacob already. He was already fearful because Esau wanted to kill him. So he was already, he had become humble, he had become broken. And he's on his way to Laban's, no doubt fearful that his brother wanted to kill him recently. And when he lays his head on that pillow, and he has this amazing dream and sees the angels of God ascending and descending. He says, this is Bethel. This is the house of God. He was the house. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb is as if he broke a dog's neck. He that offereth a meal offering is as if he offered swine's blood. He that maketh a memorial offering or frankincense is as if he blessed an idol. According as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. You see, the point in this is that God dwelleth not in temples made with hands, but a body. Jesus Christ was that body. Ye are the temple of God because what? We are members of his body. As we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we become members of his body. That's what God was showing to Jacob right there at the very beginning. Okay, so that gate that David looked for was Christ. And the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And that chief cornerstone, and actually not just the chief cornerstone, but literally it says, La Roche Pena. It became the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Okay, so you go back to Matthew, right? We look at this. We see here, when the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh. We already know this. He's talking about, you know, the husband. They did not, they weren't producing the fruits. Then, then Jesus seems like out of nowhere. He just, it's almost like, how does that apply? But it does. Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. See, Jesus said to them, they appear beforehand. He's talking about those that had charge over the vineyard and they were not bringing forth fruit. They were bringing forth sacrifices, all right, killing a bunch of ox and goats and lambs and everything else. And I'm not saying that there wasn't a temporal service set up like that. But God was looking for Christ as the body himself to be the gateway, to be the cornerstone, not just the corner, but the headstone of the corner. And this is what Jacob had already experienced. So Jesus said to them, did you never? Okay, then it goes on, verse 43. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whosoever shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now the chief priests and you know the Pharisees, they heard his parables. They perceived that he spoke of them. Sure he did. Okay, let me show you something else here, though. Speaking of the gate, because see, that's what David said, open to me the gates of righteousness. Well, Luke, Jesus says here, strive to enter at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up. You know, it's actually like a type of Noah and the ark. But in this case here, when the master has risen up, Christ raising from the dead hath shut the door, and you begin to stand without to knock at the door, like Noah, right? Saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and, and you have taught us in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. 
Not only that, I want to show you another one here in John's Gospel. This is what really gets me here, right? This is because Nicodemus, watch, well, watch what he says. Jesus, okay, well, let's back up a little bit here, right? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee. A ruler of the Jews. Same came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is going to be beautiful. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth. And you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and where it goes. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Now, did you really get what he just said here in verse 8? The wind blows where it will. In other words, the wind's going to blow wherever it wants to. And you can hear the sound of it, but you can't tell when it, when it, when it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You remember when the disciples were all gathered together after Jesus' resurrection and all of a sudden, suddenly, he just appeared in the room with them? You remember when Jesus says, when you go to pray, he says, enter in to your closet, or in another way he puts it, he says, according to the Hebrew Matthew, go lay down on your couch and close the doors upon yourself and pray in secret and your heavenly Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You ever wonder how visions occur? Now, visions occur in a very like manner. You literally go from your own body and you go to wherever it is that God is wanting to show you something. And you see it. You see, Jacob, when he was there in Jerusalem and he laid his head upon that stone, no doubt God was on his mind. Remember what we used that scripture not long ago? Where your heart is, there is your treasure. You see, Jacob's mind was upon the Lord because he was fearful of what Jacob was doing. He was a broken and a contrite spirit at that moment. And because of that, as he went down into the sleep, he was able to go into a dream and God was able to take his spirit and show him. He was like what it says here, the wind bloweth where it, where it will. And you hear that sound, but you cannot tell when it comes and where it goes. In other words, what he's showing you is when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, David Excuse me, Jacob, it wasn't so much being filled with the Holy Spirit, so God was working him with dreams. But now, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and you have been born again, he now can take you by spirit. Even though the prophets, we know they receive visions. Very similar, the only difference is, is God is controlling it when you have the vision. God takes you where he will, and then brings you back. Another way this explains this as well. Remember Philip? Not Philip. Um, yeah, Philip. He goes and he preaches to the eunuch. And then suddenly he's like transported from one place to the next. 
Imagine that. The wind blows where it will, and you can hear the sound of it, but you can't tell from where it comes and where it goes. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be. In other words, the reward. Not like, oh, you know, I mean, yeah, it is true. If your heart is on just the things of the world, you know, and all you can think about is how you're going to make money and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, you got a bunch of houses and cars and everything else and clothes and all this stuff here. Yeah, that's because that's where your heart is. Things of the world. But when you really get your heart on Jesus Christ and your meditation is upon him, he will bring you into his presence and reveal things to you. Then you will be as that wind. You will, you, they can't tell where you go and where you come from, but it will happen. So Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are you a master of Israel and know not these things? Verily I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? In other words, when he says, if I have told you of earthly things, in other words, he's telling them these things are happening here and now and we're here on earth and it happens. And if I tell you about it happening here and you don't believe it, how are you going to believe it if I tell you about what's going on in, in, in heaven? Remember, and listen, don't think this is too far off. Let me just show you another one. What did Paul say, right? Whether in the body, let's see, I spelled that wrong. All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmity. So what Jacob experienced in the dream was the cornerstone. It was Christ. It was the cornerstone. Christ making himself known to us by dreams and visions. But he said when he came, he said, the works that I do, you will do also, and greater than this, for I go unto my Father. Jesus walked on water. Jesus multiplied the fish. He multiplied the bread. He fed the multitudes. He healed the sick, raised the dead, caused the blind to see. And even he could disappear right before the multitude and walk right through them and them not even see him. Now, whether or not he disappeared or they became blind to his, to his presence, I don't know the answer to that. Doesn't make any difference to me. I believe his word. And I believe every word he says. And I am a witness to some of these things. I think we're living way below our privilege, friends. I... I I don't, know, I, I don't know if that was Moody that used to say that, Dwight Moody, or if it was uh, A.A. A. Allen. One of those guys actually used to say that. We live far below our privileges. I, I, I tell you something. I am looking for him every day. I want you to look for him 
every day, every hour, every minute, every moment, and share with us the testimonies you have here. We're living in, you know, we always hear this. We, we're living in a dangerous hour. All these evils that are coming upon the earth. We're living in the greatest hour you could ever live in. Because the sons and daughters of God are, a, are here to manifest the works of God. We're here to be living, written epistles, read of all men. Listen, let's go boldly. Let's go boldly before the throne of God. You know, what Paul speaks about here, by the way, Paul's, this is, Paul, this happened to him. He said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. It's like he's actually talking about himself. Yeah. And he went far, much further than just the third heaven too, by the way. Don't limit what God can do with you. Because we are a spiritual being. Dreams and visions. If we have dreams, we have to test those. That's why the script. And by the way, when the scripture says test the spirits to see if they're of God, he's not just talking about somebody coming up there talking to you about the word of God. He's also talking about those spirits that you may encounter, whether they come to you in visions or in dreams, test them to see if they're truly of God. Are they saying what God said in his word? Oh, you know, if you could have been with me this evening in the truck when I was telling my wife about these things, it was so much more powerful. And then I wanted to come in here and share with you guys the same way, that under the same anointing that I was under when I spoke to her. And now I didn't know this one here at the time. The wind blows where it, where it will and listeth. We have listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and where it goes. So everyone that is born of the Spirit. Because when you're born of the Spirit, when you are born again, we have that ability to move in and out. How do you think the great revelation... All right, let me just... Let me prove something to you on that right there. How did the prophets write the Word of God? By visions. Jeremiah, he's given the vision. God shows him, you know. What does thou see us, Jeremiah? Behold, I see a pot. Or, you know, let, let, let me just show something here. Uh, and maybe this will make a little bit more sense, right? I'm trying to see what have I what have I done wrong here? Mm. Must be spelling Jeremiah's name wrong. Yep, now there's where the problem is. Hang on. Sorry about this, guys. This is terrible when you can't spell. There we go. I got I gotta have another E in there. I'm still getting something wrong. Let me let me do it again. J E R E M I A H Jeremiah. What seest? Forgot the T. Here we go. Jeremiah. All right, here we go. Just for an example. Actually, let's go to 111. We'll start there. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod and an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, You have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came to me a second time, saying, 
what seest thou? All right, the point is when I'm showing you these here, in Jeremiah 24, for example, they said to me, what seest thou, Jeremiah? I said, I, see, I said, figs. The good figs are very good. The evil are very evil. They cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive to Judah. And when I have sent out the place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. You know, we can go on and on and on and on. The point is where he was moving them in and out of a spiritual realm these visions that they would have, whether or not Jeremiah is caught away in the spirit. You know, I, I can tell you from experience, when you're in a vision, you're still connected to your body. You still know your body is there. You're conscious that your body is there, but you literally, it's like you're somewhere else altogether seeing whatever God is wanting you to see. And I'm very much aware of that. I, I know what real visions are like. And I know that you can get into much greater visions, but it's still, you're still connected. What I'm wanting you to see and to understand is that God is wanting us to know much greater things. He's ready for us. He's ready for us to get ready. We are the temple of God. And we need to capitalize and build on the cornerstone, the headstone, the cornerstone that became the headstone and recognize what Jesus Christ has done for us. I'm Stephen Benoon. I hope somehow or another in this fumbled up way, I've gotten this across to you somehow. God bless you and good evening.